everybody, everybody. I come here for everybody. Kill everybody. I'm the champ. I'm the king. In this video, we're going to be breaking down all the technical skills of Hamza Chimaev. Now, when I first sat down to do this video, I didn't think this would be particularly complicated. On the surface, he just looks like a giant welterweight that can literally pick up other welterweights and drag them across the ring. He looks like he could be a weight bully. But after watching all his fights and making this video, I can say he's definitely not. He is highly, highly skilled and highly, highly technical, especially when it comes to the leg rides. Hamza is the king of the leg ride. The biggest thing I've noticed when I made this video are the leg rides. He is the king of the leg rides. I've never seen someone flow so effortlessly between leg rides uh, in MMA and, and use them so effectively. So while this video is gonna cover everything that Hamza does, we are gonna be paying particular attention to these leg rides. Now you may be asking yourself, what is a leg ride? And that's a really good question. A leg ride is a configuration that we use with our own legs to immobilize one or both of our opponent's legs. Here we can see Chimaev has one of these leg rides, the single leg triangle. And, you know, being able to use one of these is good and everything, but what makes Chimaev so interesting and so effective is he switches between them. Notice here, he has the single leg triangle. But as soon as that opponent is able to free his leg, Chimaev instantly flows to the next leg lock, which is the western hook. It is Hamzat's unbelievable ability to flow through a system of leg rides that made me realize we are dealing with a highly technical grappler and we should all absolutely be studying these leg rides. Now there's a lot to look at here, but the first thing we're gonna need to do in order to understand the whole system is break it down into its individual parts. So that's what we're gonna do in the first part of this video. Take a look at all of these leg rides and break them down one by one. Once we've done that, We'll examine how Chimaev flows through all these leg locks, how he uses one leg lock to set up the next, much like pins in judo or jiu-jitsu. And then in the third part of this video, we'll be covering everything else that he does, including the takedowns, the striking, and the submissions. This is the ultimate Hamzat Chimaev breakdown. So first things first, we gotta start with the knee block. There are three variations of this technique, but we'll start with the most important, which is where you put your leg, oftentimes your own knee, in front of your opponent's knee. Here's another view of it. See how Hamzat's knee is in front of his opponent's knee? Now what Hamzat's gonna do is drive towards the knee that's blocked. This is the motion that Hamzat will use to set up the whole system. Now oftentimes, Hamza can use the knee block as a way to stay on top of his opponent. It's a leg ride in itself. But here's the thing, when Shemaev knee blocks and drives in that direction, he either is going to break the opponent down, or he's going to break down his opponent, off-balancing them for long enough and distracting them long enough, in order for Hamza to advance to the next leg ride. Which in this case is going to be a calf pin like you're seeing here. A technique that Hamza set up through using the knee block. If you understand striking, it might be useful to you to think of this version of the knee block as the jab of the leg rides. It is a low effort, high reward technique that when combined with this motion of driving towards it, sets up the rest of the techniques within the leg riding system. Let's take a look at that in action. So Hamzat begins driving his opponent over that knee. And while he does that, he's able to navigate his way to getting a higher level leg ride, which is the Western hook. A technique which we'll be breaking down later in this video. Now Hamzat's gonna continue pressing down towards that knee block. Only now he has the knee block and the Western hook in play. So it's even worse now. And once again, he sets up a higher position using that knee block. So we've got the knee block here, right? And we've also got the Western hook still here. Now because that western hook is there, Hamzat can go even further up the leg ride hierarchy now. So watch Hamzat's knee as his opponent lifts his own leg up. He's trying to escape that western hook. Hamzat anticipating it, 
releases his western hook and slides that knee block in. Now he's got a position he's even more dangerous from than the other two, which is this inside grapevine. We'll be going over this move later in this video, but what's important to know is it's high up on the leg ride hierarchy, it's very good. But he got there using the knee block, something low on the hierarchy, to set it up. To really drive this point home, let's take a look at another example. So here, Hamzat has that knee block in play. And as I've been saying, he's going to use that driving motion towards this knee block in order to get his opponents off balance here. And when he does that, he sets up this calf pin. Knowing the opponent will try to free his leg from this calf pin, as you're about to see here. Notice the opponent is lifting the leg up in an attempt to free himself from that leg ride. Hamzat's already released that calf pin. Hamzat, since he has a system, automatically knows when that leg comes up, he's going to slide his leg in that space and once again establish a high leg ride on the hierarchy, the inside grapevine. This is a move Hamzat can absolutely crush people with, but notice he set it up with that knee block. That's what I want you really to take away from this first version of the knee block. That first version sets up everything else. So that was the first version of the knee block. Let's take a look at the second version now. Difference being here, he's resting his knee on top of the opponent's knee instead of placing his knee in front of the opponent's knee like we saw in the first version. Now this is going to accomplish a couple things. One, pins that opponent's leg to the floor. Two, is it's going to free up the same side hand as Chimaev. So not only are you immobilizing one of his joints, but you're mobilizing one of your own. Now let's take a look at another example. So here we can see Hamzat's hand is engaged in grappling, but as he slides that knee on top of his opponent's knee, he's now going to be able to pull that arm free and do what he likes with it. In this case, he's going to put it back into grapple, but since that knee remains on top, he's going to be able to take it out again. Now we've also got an elevated knee block, and what I mean by elevated knee block is that instead of resting on his knee, Hamzat's going to be resting on his foot for this one. That's going to put the knee up higher, elevated. And when he does this, you're going to see him pushing his knee in. In this case, it's going to trap the shoulder and keep his opponent trapped up against that cage. So that pushing in is a big one with this. A big advantage of this elevated knee block is that you're pretty much halfway to standing already. You're a lot closer to standing than your opponent is. So as your opponent gets up, like as you're seeing here, you're going to notice Hamzat is going to stand up all the way. And what he's going to do is just throw his kneeling opponent to his right, continue the momentum, throw him down. And what he's going to do is just throw his kneeling opponent to his right, continue the momentum, throw him down. And now, as I'm sure you know, things are not looking too good for Hamzat's opponent from this position. Let's take a look at another example of this elevated knee block. Here we see that that knee is up. And he doesn't have control of that shoulder yet, so he's pressing his knee into the opponent's ribs for right now. So you can see he's maintaining control. A lot of wrist fighting here. And now watch, he's going to slide his knee in front of his opponent's shoulder to get control over that shoulder. See that there? And in doing so, you notice that shoulder is really blocked off by that knee now. Hamzat is able to free that arm and now he's able to do whatever he wants with this. In this case, he's going to hit him. And I think what's important to remember is that he flows through a system of leg locks. So if he ever wants to abandon this elevated knee position, all he's got to do is put his knee down and now he's going to be returning to that first knee block that we discussed. And that's the jab of the whole thing and the whole ride starts all over again. Now there's other names for this move, but in my high school when I was wrestling, we called it the Western Hook. So for this breakdown, I will be referring to it as such. So we're starting off in this knee block position here. And once again, we're going to drive towards the knee block to create that initial momentum that's going to allow the next chain of leg locks. We do that and now pay attention to Hamzat's right knee here. With his opponent broken down, Hamzat's going to lift that knee up and now he's going to scoop his ankle underneath the ankle of his opponent to establish the western hook. Notice how Hamzat's leg is wrapped around his opponent's leg. Now one of the main functions of this western hook is that Hamzat can use it, or anyone that uses it can use it, 
to keep that opponent's leg extended as he tries to get up. As long as that leg is extended away from him, he'll be stuck there and he won't be able to stand back up. And not only that, but notice as he's trying to stand up, Hamzat's able to get one of his arms free. Occupying one of those legs frees one of the arms and Hamzat can hit, wrestle, do whatever he likes. And that's gonna be a reoccurring theme here. Those leg rides free up your hands to hit or do whatever you like with them. Let's take a look at some more functions of this Western hook. This is a great move. Notice here, Hamzat's got the uh, Western hook. In this situation, he's hooking the opponent's right leg with his left leg. It was vice versa in the last situation. Notice how Hamzat's gonna be able to free the left arm, land a few strikes here. And here's one of the cool things about the Western hook. He's going to use it to pull his opponent back and get him off balance. So watch as Hamzat actually drags this western hook. Watch this foot. He's going to hop it back, and he's going to use it to get his opponent broken down. Notice he's bent the opponent over, and he's broken down the posture, all by using that hop back with the western hook. So we saw him hop back, but we can also see him hop forward with the western hook. So now... He's going to push off this foot going forward, and he's going to use that again to get the opponent even more off balance and more broken down. So we hopped back, broke him down a little bit, pushed forward, got him all the way broken down. Well, not all the way. He's on all fours, but he's significantly lower than he was before by using the hop back and hop forward with the western hook. So apart from being an excellent technique to immobilize your opponent, make it hard for him to get his leg back when he tries to stand up and break down your opponent. It is also a great transitional technique as well. And what we're gonna see here is Hamza use the Western hook to transition to a different leg lock in the system. So we know that this Western hook is on, meaning that the right leg of his opponent is immobilized. So the leg that's gonna be moving in this case is the left leg. The right leg can't do anything so the left leg is going to have to come into play here. So, opponent lifts that knee up. And look, as soon as he does, watch Hamzat's left foot. He detaches the western hook and immediately throws in an inside hook, which we'll be talking about later. This is one of Hamzat's best techniques, is this hook right here. It was set up by using that western hook. A move that's similar to the western hook is going to be shin pinning the leg in this case the ankle or the calf. So watch, we're gonna watch Hamzat knee block and drive to knock his opponent over. As his opponent's trying to figure out that, he's gonna slide his own shin on top of the opponent's leg. This way it's like between the ankle and the calf. And notice he hooks around. This is a good control point for Hamzat and it's very easy to get. It's also very easy to get in combination with that knee block. Like the Western hook, this move not only immobilizes the leg, but is also a terrific transitional tool as well. So Chemayev's opponent's going to try to escape by straightening out this leg. Watch this. As he does, Hamzat immediately takes off that shin pin. He repositions it behind himself like so. And if we now watch the left leg of Chemayev, we're going to see him once again use this as a way to enter the inside hook as he lifts that knee up. Bam. It's on. So you've heard me mention the inside hook a couple times now. I think it's about time we talked about it. Let's take a look at Hamzat set one up. What he's going to do is he's going to drag his opponent back like so. When he does that, he gets the opponent broken down. A pretty typical reaction is for the opponent to try to get back up right away. So watch as his opponent lifts his knee to try to get back. Hamzat immediately whips that leg over, and now he's going to curl the heel back to get the inside hook. Now Hamzat's really going to hook it on. Watch that leg. He's going to curl it back even more. And this is when the inside hook becomes really strong. What I mean by that is Hamzat's ankle is now past his opponent's ankle. Now if Chemayev has this inside hook, right, and you're up like so, like these guys are pretty upright right now, what he's going to start doing is looking to grab your wrist and break you down. Because if he can break you down while he has an inside hook, this starts to become really dangerous for the bottom guy. Especially if he starts throwing him that double wrist ride there, like he's always looking to do. What he's going to do is pull on that 
and use it to shin pin your other leg. So now he's got an inside hook and a shin pin on your other leg. And now you're in some real danger, especially because you're turned away from him. Let's look at another angle here. Here you can see the inside hook, and here you can see that shin pin. Notice how broken down the opponent is now. Hamzat's like just sitting on it, posturing up, and the opponent's stuck, turned away from Hamzat because of that leg configuration of the inside hook and shin pin. One of the only things this guy is going to be able to do is try to get up onto his elbow and attempt to begin trying to escape. But all that does is open up the double wrist ride that we talked about, right? We've called this the Dagestani handcuff in the past. I've made a video where I called this a Dagestani handcuff. And that's going to allow him to suck that wrist in and really start putting the weight down. Uh, once that weight comes down, oh, you're just trapped there. It's a miserable position. He can beat you once he frees that left hand. Not only that, but turn too far away from him, and he starts going for the rear naked choke. So it's a great position, that inside hook. You can get it from the turtle position, or you break them down to their back, and you get that inside hook and shin pin. And one thing you're going to see a lot from Hamzad is he adds a grapevine onto his inside hook. So this is a move in combination with the inside hook that we just discussed. So just like before, we can see that Hamzat has that inside hook on the opponent there. And as we zoom away, we're going to see what Hamzat's doing with his foot. See how he's wrapping his foot around the opponent's shin? This is what makes it the grapevine. This is the grapevine in combination with the inside hook. Let's take another example, right? Hamzat has his opponent's left leg wrapped in his own left inside hook. And if we watch the foot now, right? Watch that foot. It's going to curl around the opponent's shin. And this inside grapevine is, is like considered one higher up on the hierarchy than just the inside hook. It's a fantastic control position and you can always switch back to the inside hook when you need it. So we notice here Hamzat brought that foot in. He's now back to just the out inside hook. And what he's going to do is he's now going to wrap his leg around the ankle of the opponent again, getting that grapevine. Notice how that's extended the leg. And like we talked about, having that leg extended really means that you can't get up. And he switches to the next move off of that grapevine, which we're going to look at the single leg triangle. So here we're taking a look at a single leg triangle, and this definitely is one of the higher tier techniques in the leg riding um, hierarchy. And this is the one you really see him going for the most. He can't run away. That leg is just so securely locked. Let's watch Hamza throw this in again, right? So watch that left leg there. He's going to throw that in, and he's going to get an inside hook. He drags that inside back. Then he finger floors his legs together to create this single leg triangle. A position that is incredibly, incredibly difficult for the opponent to pull his leg back from and get up. So here you can see Hamzat throw up that elevated knee block. He's then going to switch to that knee block variation where the knee is resting on top of his opponent's knee. He now switches to the inside hook seamlessly from that knee block. And now he's going to pull back with his left heel as he drags the opponent's legs towards the fence. He's then going to windshield wiper his own right foot, Hamzad is. Windshield wiper it, gets it underneath the shin of the opponent. Now he's going to throw that left leg right on top of the right leg to make the triangle configuration. Here is pretty interesting too because he's tucked his own right foot underneath the leg of the opponent. A little different than your standard triangle. Here we're going to see it again. Notice there's the inside hook from Shimayo. He's going to drag that heel back. Instead of going for the shin pin like we talked about, he's going to drag that heel back. And he's going to take that left leg now. He's going to throw it on top of his right leg. He's got that single leg triangle. And this is interesting. He even grapevines the opponent's ankle with this version. That's going to make this extremely difficult to escape from. Especially when he starts getting your wrist behind your back like that. Oh my goodness. Let's take one more look at him setting up the single leg triangle. Notice his opponent is crawling away. Crawling to the cage, desperate to get away. Hamzat's a bad man. 
turns his back to the cage. I'm sorry, gets his side to the cage. Typically a, a strategy you use to stand up. So opponent's gonna try to stand up now. That's what he was looking to do. So we can see here, the opponent's left leg is coming up, but Hamzat immediately scoops that up with an inside hook around the opponent's shin, it would look like in this situation. He's now gonna drag that inside hook back until he's able to meet the, the right leg and feed in that triangle. Now we've got the single leg triangle. So this single leg triangle, like I said, is something that Hamzat's always going for, extremely difficult to escape from, yet all kinds of options, and of course, you can always just switch back to using those knee blocks and western hooks should you need to abandon this triangle for any reason. Next, we're gonna be looking at a hook and knee, which is a combination of a knee block and an inside hook. Let's take a look at this. So here you can see Hamzat has the inside hook and he's got the knee block there. The combination of these two are what's allowing him to stay on top right now without falling off. So here we see uh, he's using this hook and knee and he just switched to an elevated knee block. Before he was using a version of the knee block where the knee rests on top of the opponent's knee. But you now he's got the elevated knee block and he's got that same side wrist ride there. And now just look at all the shots Chemaev is gonna get off on his opponent here. That's because this position is actually a tremendous way to get space between you and your opponent. By using the hook and knee, you can lift your torso up a little bit more and rain down these big shots. Like I said, you're gonna notice Hamzat is up high right now. And when he's up high, like he is right now, you're gonna notice that his foot is on the floor. He uses that foot there as a base and it allows him to come up a little bit higher uh, because his foot's there. But if he were to come down, watch, that leg turns in. The hooking leg is now turned in. The knee is on the floor. We've got an on the floor knee block. And the hooking leg, we've got an inside hook now around the opponent's hip. So it went from standing to hooked. The two can change uh, when you play the hooking knee. While that hook is in, you can return to an elevated knee block. So the inside hook could be wrapped around the opponent's hip and you can switch between an elevated knee block and a kneeling block. And one thing that's so great about the hook and knee is that it's just such a good option as soon as Hamzat enters that inside hook, which we know he loves to go for. So look, Hamzat throws in the inside hook. And as soon as he gets that, he's gonna circle around his opponent and secure a knee block on the other side. So he's gone around the opponent's back and established the hook and knee to gain control on the other side. So Hamzat's goal, right, he has one inside hook on the right side. Typically what you want to do is change that knee block into another inside hook. And pay attention to this knee here, right? The knee block is going to come up and then around and then he throws in his second inside hook and now you're in some deep shit. Now this right here, what we're looking at, this is the back mount. This is the king daddy of all the leg riding positions. I've heard this called the double boots, the double hooks, whatever you want to call it. This right here, two legs in on top of the opponent and breaking him down. And remember what we got here are two inside hooks. We know that one inside hook is a great move for Shamayo, but he's always going to be looking for those two inside hooks. This is where things get so brutal for the man on bottom especially when he gets flat. See how he's flattening the guy out there? A big important thing to understand is staying on top and having this guy broken down flat is much better than rolling off to the side for the rear naked choke. At least try this first before you roll off to the side. Now here's the thing, you, you still, well not only can you beat on the guy, right? Tons of free shots here for Chimayo. Just look how exposed that head is. Keep in mind, if this was the streets, one shot to the back of that neck with an elbow, you're paralyzed for life. So look at all the shots Chimaev gets off on his opponent here. And not only do you have the option to hit, which you really don't have when you roll over to the side, you can still throw in that rear naked choke. Right, you have the option to throw that in from the top position and then roll. Don't roll, then throw in the choke. Put the choke in first. 
And now if you need extra leverage to finish the choke, you can roll off to the side. Because when you roll off to the side, you'll be able to hip in to your opponent, right? That's gonna give you the extra finishing power that you need to get this choke done. All right, man, we got a pretty funky one next. We're gonna call this a reverse Western hook. Um, there are some people that might call this a Turk and they might be right. As you're gonna see though, it does get a little funky. So it gets a little blurred what it is. We start off here with the shin pin. Notice this is not an inside hook and shin pin. This is simply a shin pin from the opponent's open guard. Now, if we change the angle on this, you're going to see Hamzat's leg is underneath of his opponent's leg. It's not threaded through like the left leg would be for an inside hook. The right leg is resting on top of his opponent's thigh. He's now going to pull on that wrist and push into his opponent. And what that's going to do is it's going to break the opponent down like you're seeing here. And now watch Hamzat's right leg. It's like in the half guard of the opponent right now, but what he's gonna do is lift up that foot and bring it over towards the cage. Now that's the part you might be able to call a Turk. Notice here too, he's placing his foot over the opponent's ankle and curling it around, creating a grapevine in addition to this hook. I don't know a lot of guys that can use this as a control position, uh, especially when the opponent comes up to their knees like they are now. You ever seen somebody use a leg ride like this to control somebody before? I haven't. If you have, comment below. But the reason I'm calling this the reverse western is because the leg is coming through from the outside in versus the inside out. So it's coming in the reverse direction, thus the reverse western. So what really amazes me is how well he can control people with this thing. It actually seems like a very effective technique and I've never seen anybody else use it before. And what's really cool to see is how this move integrates into his whole larger leg riding system, right? So we're gonna see he's detached from that reverse Western hook. And what he's gonna do next is flow to the next leg ride, which is gonna be that elevated knee block, which we talked about, right? From here, remember he's pushing in with that knee, he stands up, but then he's looking for the knee on top, right? The knee on top knee ride that we talked about. So that move, the reverse Western, is integrated into this larger game. All right, man, the double front hip ride. You know, I feel like fighters have been doing this for a while, but it became really popular when Khabib started doing it, right? That leg triangle. But there's all kinds of leg configurations we could do, so watch. Pay attention to that left leg of Jemaya, right? He's kind of in the guard passing situation right now. But he slips that leg over the top, and he crosses his feet, and he ends up like sitting on the hip slash upper thigh of his opponent. And this is kind of different than the traditional guard passing mentality, right? Instead of the jujitsu guy who would traditionally try to get past the legs, He's gonna rest his hips on top of his hips instead. So he doesn't go past the legs. He just kind of chills there. And this makes it extremely difficult for the man on bottom to do anything. And oftentimes this struggle will end in mount. But it's not like you tried to get there, right? It just kind of happens. And then you can do mount things to him. All right, man, so now that we have broken down all of the leg rides that Hamzat uses. If you're still with me, I appreciate you infinitely. Let's take a look at some leg ride flows. And by flow, I mean we're going to watch him move from one leg ride to the next as he advances through the hierarchy of his leg riding system. So we see right now, as the system typically starts, we have Hamzat with that grounded knee block. Remember, I called this the jab of this leg riding flow system here. Right As the opponent comes up, notice Hamzat turns that knee block into an inside hook. And in this particular situation, we have the grapevine as well. Notice that hook, that ankle hooking around his opponent's ankle. So we can see Hamzat starts beating up his opponent a little bit here using that grapevine. 
But then to get his base back, he's going to switch back to the inside hook. So this way he can post on his own foot. Whereas with the grapevine, his foot is attached to his opponent's foot so he cannot post on it and get use it for balance. Now we're going to see Hamzat fight the wrists of his opponent. Fighting the wrists, by the way, is always integral into riding legs. You almost can't separate the two. And when Shemayev is able to get a little bit better balance, a little bit better base, he throws in that grapevine again and straightens out the leg of his opponent. But watch how he hooks and kicks it out straight, right? Now with that leg extended, we're going up to a real high tier leg ride, which is the single leg triangle like you're seeing here. So here we're seeing a more traditional triangle with the left leg over the right knee and the right leg extended with the foot, the top of the right foot on the ground. Now Hamzat's opponent's gonna use a tremendous amount of energy to try to get his leg free, and that's what Hamzat disengages. One good thing about this leg riding system is he knows when to take it off. He knows when to disengage from the leg ride. But what you're gonna see him do is return to that basic, return to that knee block. Always return to that knee block if you want to start the leg riding system all over again. Now look, Hamzat brings him towards the block and he's actually going to run around to the other side and he's going to get a knee block with his knee resting on his opponent's knee but he's also got a shin pin there, right? Really effective technique. Now what's going to happen is his opponent turns and when he does, immediately throwing in that inside hook. We know Chamayo is always looking for that inside hook and he's a master of getting there. Now Hamzat's opponent knows this is bad, so he's gonna start trying to base up to get away, right? But as he tries to get up, Hamzat's got that hook and knee. We talked about how that hook and knee works and notice the space that it's giving Hamzat here to come up. And this next bit's gonna be really important, right? You're gonna notice Hamzat is threatening the rear naked choke. So not only is this a fight ender, but the opponent has to defend it. The opponent has to risk fight here. And when he does, that's gonna clear a space for the leg that's knee, the knee block, to become another inside hook. And that is when you're gonna see Hamzat enter the king daddy of all the leg rides. The back mount, the double boots, the double hooks, whatever you wanna call it. But what you just saw was all one sequence of a seamless, flawless leg ride flow all the way to flattening someone out with the highest in the tier, the back mount. Now one move in particular, one submission in particular that Hamzat's really good with, got three wins with it, is the Anaconda choke. And this is a great choke and it works for Hamzat for this reason, right? The Anaconda choke is a figure four choke with the arm involved, the opponent's arm, one of them. And it also has like a leg riding aspect to it, right? So the combination of throwing your legs over with that figure four lock-in is what gets the choke. And since Hamzat, you know, he's such a leg rider, this is the perfect choke for him. The anaconda is the perfect choke. So look, he has the anaconda, right? Runs around throws the leg over, right, kind of on his back, but, you know, angled off. And this is your leg ride aspect right here. It's the choke combined with some kind of leg ride. And in this case, watch this. This is, he puts the guy right to sleep. Now against Kevin Holland is where you're really gonna be able to see the anaconda and leg ride combination come together. So look, Hamzat's got the anaconda, right? Immediately, he's gonna turn on his side and start throwing that leg, right? So he's got a leg ride on Kevin's far leg, the leg furthest from Hamzat. And when Kevin gets that leg out, as you're gonna see here, right? So now we can see that Hamza, I mean that Kevin has actually gotten his leg out of that leg ride, but Hamzat, like he did in the leg riding system we talked about earlier, immediately switches to a leg ride on the near leg right so he's switching between a system of leg rides as he's doing this anaconda choke and we're going to see that when kevin gets that leg out 
right? He's escaped from this now. Hamza is going to keep that anaconda, but we're once again going to see him attack with a kind of leg ride, right? So he's thrown those legs over again, and he's got control over Kevin. A kind of scramble is going to ensue here. Kevin really doesn't want to tap. It was early in the fight, I understand. Flips him over. And we're going to see one more time. Hamzat's going to go in for a leg ride. Some kind of leg control. And that's what's going to get the tap. Hamzat has a special ability to do a drawing shot. This is a shot where you put pressure on the opponent with your strikes or your movement so that they want to strike. Notice, Hamzat throws the rear hook. And that's going to draw out the lead hook of Gilbert Burns here. And when he throws that lead hook, Hamzat's going to duck underneath, enter in on the deep double. But he drew out that shot from Gilbert. Take a look at another example here. Hamzat Shimaev throws this big right kick to the body, right? That's going to eventually draw out the left hook of his opponent here. Hamzat immediately goes in, gets around both those knees, right to a takedown. Here we see again. Hamzat shoots in, kicks off, balances the opponent. Here's another example, right? Hamzat's going to move in, and when he does, he draws the jab out of his opponent, right? Immediately shoots in underneath that jab. So he drew out the strike that he reacted to. Here we see again. Hamzat throws out that fake jab, right? Opponent throws that big right. Feels like he has to do it. Draws out the shot. Shoots in underneath. He's in deep. Deep, deep, deep on that double. Here's another example, right? Hamzat goes in, throws that body kick. Opponent feels like he's got to respond, immediately goes to throw that left hook. Hamzat shoots it underneath, deep in on that double leg. Gets that one leg up. Hips underneath his opponent. Blasts that knee up. Slams opponent down. I wanted to include it because I think it's pretty underrated. Low kick to double. Watch. Kicks the leg, off balance his opponent, gets him out of his stance, immediately drives it. He's got that body lock. They continue to wrestle. Hamzat pinches the knees together around that leg. An excellent technique. Lifts. Slams him right down. So I'm beginning to notice more and more one of the most effective ways to take someone down is the bear hug drag down. And the way this works is you constantly kick out your opponent's legs until you can drag them down from him being off balance and having no base. So notice we've got a kick sweep. Immediately switches to another sweep. He's going to be flowing through a bunch of sweeps here. Here's a third sweep. Constantly keeping him off balance. Here's a fourth sweep. Right? Throws in a knee block. They continue getting him off balance. Throws in a second knee block. Right? Now he's going to drag him down. Now he knows he's got the opponent off balance. Drags him right down to the ground. Now we're coming to the end of this breakdown. And we'll go over some strikes. We won't spend tons of detail on the strikes. But let's take a look at them. He has an amazing power jab, right? He can sit you down with just one jab. And that jab could be with the right hand, like you're seeing here. Or it could be with the left hand, like you're seeing here. Very rare a fighter can knock you over with a jab from either side. And if you think his jab was powerful, wait until you see the straight right. The straight right will knock you into the shadow run. He's got absolute fucking dynamite in that right hand. Right? Not much more else to say about that other than don't get hit by it. And as powerful as that jab and that straight right is, that power uppercut that he's got might be even scarier because that uppercut is always the hardest to see coming. Look at the technique here. Perfect. Powers, angles off afterwards. Flawless technique here. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is Hamza Chimaev has now walked up and walked three grown men across the octagon like so. Just picked them up, walked them across the ring, and then sat them down. Watch. Catches this guy's low kick, right? Shoots in on the low kick. 
straightens his back up, right? He's got the clasp under the butt. And he's just going to walk him across the ring, throw him. Look at that leg in the air. Slam him down. And a third time, he's lifted three grown men, two of them UFC level, walks him across the cage, slammed him down. 